I'm Nathan with Holston Gases and today I want to talk to you guys about the importance of a good work connection in your welding circuit. Too often than not the welding clamp or the work clamp is disregarded and neglected in the welding circuit and welding discontinuities and defects can occur because of it. In a previous video we talked about the importance of sizing the welding cable on the secondary side of the welding circuit correctly so you have a large enough welding cable to, to do the job and to carry the current and voltage and to prevent any types of voltage drops in your welding circuit well just as important as sizing the cable correctly it's important to size the work connection or the work clamp correctly and to make sure it's in good shape so that's what we're going to talk about today so I hope you enjoy it so the first thing that we need to know when we're talking about sizing a work clamp is we need to know that there's different sizes work clamps for different applications Work clamps are sized just like welding cable for an amperage rating. So here we have two different 300 amp work, work clamps. And so we can find the work clamp uh, amperage rating on the package and sometimes even on the work clamp itself. So let's talk about the difference of these two types of 300 amp work clamps. So this one's going to be less expensive than this casted copper work clamp. And so uh, this one is, even though it's rated at 300 amps, if it's being used at 300 amps for a long period of time, my experience has shown that these things do degrade over time and become very loose and make poor electrical contact over time. And when they become loose, they heat up. And when they heat up, they'll end up looking like this, where they get rusted and tarnished looking and just don't have the spring tension they did when they were new. So as a brand new work clamp, it makes a pretty firm connection, um, but over time, after it heats up, it loses some of that tension, and so it's not doesn't perform nearly as well as it did when it was new. And so next is this casted copper type work clamp. It's going to be a little bit more expensive, but the reason I like it more than this work clamp is it's just a little bit more robust, and also we can make electrical contact from our weld cable directly to the work clamp through this type of studded fitting here, um, where you would insert the cable after you had stripped the insulation off and then you would tighten it down and that makes a really good connection and then you can use this band to secure it um, as a strain relief and so this type of work clamp works really well however I have seen these get to where if they're used at too high of a duty cycle or too high of a welding amperage they start to lose some of their tension because it's working on the spring um, and that spring if this work clamp gets overheated that spring loses its tension right and so it doesn't make good contact any longer and so whenever you don't have good contact uh, between your uh, work clamp and your work piece you can expect for heat build up and then resistance build up and then you hit you have voltage drops um, and then next is we have a very robust and these come in 300 amp up to 600 amp I've seen them and this is a 600 amp C clamp style work clamp and these are very very good they're very robust and the reason I like them is because you can install them very firmly onto the workpiece and so you know you have a very good solid connection between the work clamp and the workpiece also there's enough surface area to, to transfer the current from the work connection to the work clamp sometimes these types of work clamps don't contact the work piece with enough surface area and the current can't transfer across the um, connection very well and it again adds to heat buildup. So keep in mind that there's different size work clamps for different applications. There's nothing wrong with oversizing the work clamp for the application to ensure that it never gets too hot and that it always maintains its integrity. So now that we've talked about sizing the work clamp correctly, I want to talk for just a moment about installing one of the spring-loaded type work clamps correctly onto the working surface that you're going to be welding on. So let's take a look here. So obviously connecting a work clamp to a painted surface isn't going to do anything for you and it's not going to provide good electrical contact for your welding circuit. Next, if you install the work clamp onto the actual metal surface that your parts that you're welding on will be sitting on, this works okay, but occasionally you can experience some poor arc starts especially if your parts are dirty or if there's a lot of spatter buildup on the table that's not allowing your part to to sit firmly onto the surface of your welding table so it's always best to install your work clamp directly to the piece that you're welding on so the last thing i want to talk about 
is what are we going to do if we're always welding on very small parts and it's just not feasible to hook a work clamp directly to the part. That's perfectly okay. So there's a couple options there and I also want to talk a little bit about maintenance with the welding cables and leads uh, around our work clamp. Uh, particularly because this is typically where we see problems. So first things first, so what are we going to do if we're at a workstation that's permanent or maybe semi-mobile? So if it's a semi-mobile workstation, I still really like the C-clamp style because we can still uh, quickly detach it and reattach it without um, getting any tools out. So this is still one of my favorite work clamps because it's very mobile. Now if it's permanent workstation that we're not going to need any mobility, then it's perfectly okay to use a cable lug. And uh, just keep in mind that the cable lug has stamped on it typically the, the size that it's used for, for what size cable. So this one right here is sized for 3 aught and 4 aught cable. So we could just attach this directly to the workstation and we'll be good to go. When you attach it to the workstation, be sure that the surface that you're attaching it to obviously isn't painted or doesn't have any grease or lubricants on it. And it's always a good idea to take an abrasive and go ahead and scratch the metal surface so it's nice and shiny. So now I want to talk about doing a little bit of maintenance and what to look for when a cable needs to be replaced. So here are some pictures of some cables um, and connections that I found in different facilities that I've visited over the years. And so what you'll find in common with most of these is that there's exposed copper. Anytime copper is exposed to the atmosphere, it'll begin to oxidize and oxidized copper is has a higher resistance than clean shiny copper that's not been oxidized and so therefore the more oxidation that occurs the uh, the more of a voltage drop you'll get over that portion of cable so it's always best to have as little exposed copper as possible also you'll find that a lot of these connections have missing strands or strands that are broken at the termination because they've been dragged around and neglected and abused and so whenever you lose copper strands you don't have the same cross-sectional area for current to transfer through the cable into the work connection so if we see something like maybe this terminal here that has uh, a bunch of strands missing then we'll want to cut back about six to ten inches of weld cable and then install a new termination and so I'm going to show you how to do that right now for this work clamp. So the first thing that I need to do is I'm going to take off the existing cable lug, determine what size cable lug I need to replace it with and in this case this is a 4 aught cable and so we can always tell what size cable we have typically it's uh, labeled on the insulation and this one here is 4 aught so I've got a 4 aught cable lug. With some cab cable cutters, I'm going to cut back about 6 inches. And then I'm going to measure how much I need to cut so that I can insert the exposed copper all the way into the cable lug without leaving exposed copper cable on the outside of the cable lug. Once I've determined where that's going to be, I'm going to take just a razor knife and cut the insulation all the way around. Try not to cut any of the copper strands. So now I'm going to insert the cable lug into this cable crimper tool and I'm going to beat it with a hammer here. And now I've got a well fastened cable lug onto my cable and I can install it back on to my C-clamp style ground clamp. So that does it for this video. So just remember that the welding work clamp or connection is extremely important part of the welding circuit. And if neglected, it can lead to weld defects or discontinuities such as spatter, lack of fusion, or even poor arc starting. So there's a few things that we need to remember from today's topic. One of them is that the welding work clamp needs to be sized appropriately for the welding current that will be used. There's nothing wrong with oversizing it a little bit to ensure uh, integrity and to ensure its longevity. Also, it's always important to make sure that the welding work clamp is firmly attached to the workpiece that you're welding on. If you're not able to attach it directly to the workpiece you're welding on, make sure that the welding table that you're attaching the work clamp or connection to is clean, free of spatter, grease, dirt, rust, anything that can inhibit current flow from the power source to the welding arc. If you do these things, you'll see a dramatic increase in, in or improvement in uh, weld quality. 
So always remember to keep an eye out for your work clamp to make sure it's in good working order and not neglected. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact your local Holston Gases distributor.